how big was the firm over in Italy with England? Oh, it, it was massive. And bear in mind, all, the Italians are really all, our, all, all our domestic clubs were banned from playing in Europe prior to Italy 1990. And this was the big test for them because Margaret Thatcher was going to ban them from going to the World Cup. So she, she backed off that and said they can go, but it's the final test for them. So if there's any, any aggro this time, they won't even be playing in Europe anymore, England, you know, outside. Mm-hmm. So it was a big test, but we went then as a, as, a, as a unit and lived with the football hooligans. So five weeks I was there, as I say. Now, I had no contact hardly with my family at home. Uh, uh, you're knocking about with them on a daily basis. Uh, we're in Sardinia. They were put on Sardinia for a reason, because it's an island. So what they thought was, let's put all the football, England football hooligans on an island and keep them off the mainland. So they were there for the initial stages of the World Cup. But they still caused trouble. Um, you know, there was an incident where uh, it kicked off uh, and there was about 400 arrested and about 270-odd got deported the following day. But that was based on what we had fed through as to who had been doing what. Yeah. So when they got through those initial stages, we then went on the mainland. And uh, Rimini was a big place where it went off. And in my book, I've got some photographs there because um, we were in a mass group, left from the railway station. Eventually, it kicks off with the Italian fans. Uh, It becomes mayhem. So the Italian police, who weren't there to mess about with the English fans, they had uh, rifles, tear gas, yeah, dressed in riot gear. If you looked at them the wrong way, they'd they'd have you. That's how, how, when I say how bad it was, that's how it perhaps it should be to deal with these people who were causing the trouble. But it became a free-for-all and everyone was running because they were firing the tear gas. And I don't know if you've ever had the tear gas. No. It's horrendous. Your eyes are burning. Can't breathe. And uh, the group I was with, even my own lads from my unit, we got separated. So I was running away and I thought, the best thing to do here is get against the wall. So I don't have to worry about what's behind me because there was stuff being thrown left, right and centre. Tear gas, as I say, being fired. So I stood and a lad who I don't know stood next to me. I had the same thoughts. Next minute, I heard him moan. And when I looked, he'd been hit in the face with a brick. Yeah, and he went down on the floor. <laughs> now, that could have been me. Yeah, but I'm a police officer. Perhaps I should be looking after him. But it was it was like uh, survival of the fittest. So I ran off again then to get away. And eventually, we end up on a garage forecourt. And the Italian police, the Carabinieri, the riot team, they got everybody down on the floor. And if you looked at them the wrong way, or, like I say, if you had a camera, you'd come over and smash it up. Now, I had a, a small camera, a discreet one, and I took pictures, which are in that book there, from when I was laying on the floor. Yeah. So we got detained on that occasion. But again, a lot more got deported because of evidence from the, uh, from the undercover unit. So we were always there. Uh, and people might say, well, how do, you, how, do you, how do you go drinking with them on a daily basis? Because you couldn't be getting rat assed and giving evidence, could you? So they have a technique that they use, which is called dumping, if you've ever heard of it. No. So I might be sat with you and your mates, and uh, we're having a chat about all sorts of what's going on. Because if you, if you look at it how it went there, you'd play one match, then you'd have more or less uh, about five or six days before the next match. So what they would do, the English, on a daily basis, is just go in all the bars on, on a ma- when there wasn't a match. So you'd be building up then that relationship with all these different... Uh, uh, members of different clubs, hooligan element. Um, and uh, yeah. you might go in then, get a pint, and I'll be sat with you, and then I get up and I go off and see, speak to some other group. As I'm sat there, I put that pint down, and I pick one up that's empty. So to all intents and purposes, if I come back to you, I've drunk that one. So I wouldn't be drinking like they would, because you've got to have credibility. What happens then if you get the jail in Italy? Do you, do you tell them who you are, or do you just got to get the same no, treatment so, as everyone so, else? No, uh, so we had a, uh, there was a, a command uh, office where you were given a, a number to ring. Now, we didn't have mobiles, so whenever you got the opportunity to get to a phone box discreetly, you would use it, and then you'd give a code name to, to that control room who would know who you were then, and then you'd give whatever evidence, uh, whatever information you had about what was going to be planned for that day, uh, and they could act upon that then. And likewise, if they had any information for us, they could pass it back to us. So 
you know, like in in uh, the Euros in uh, '92, Malmo Square, the you know the locals there, the authorities, uh, catered for the English fans superbly. What do they do? They abuse it. Yeah. So one of the things they were going to do, they were going to put two English lads up on the uh, main tent, the beer tent, and they were going to start jumping up, yeah, bouncing on it. And when the authorities went to get them down, that was a signal to kick off. There was going to be a mass mass brawl. So that was fed through, and the authorities uh, decided, not leave them up there, let them bounce. So it never happened, because all these thickos who were waiting for it, it didn't happen. So that, that like, kibosh that. Uh, but again, in Malmo, there was an ITV news uh, cameraman filming, and he had one of their big cameras on his shoulder. And this group uh, grabbed him, took the uh, camera off his uh, shoulder, swinging it round like a bag, smashed it to pieces on the floor. Now, how much those cameras cost? Yeah, thousands. Yeah. Now, because we were there, we knew who it was. So they got locked up and got uh, deported. 